I'm tired of drilling holes in my patio, but I want to find the perfect bolt pattern. So I'm here at the park aerating the lawn in this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to the park. We are going to test different bolt patterns by using these 14 inch long by 3 8 inch lag bolts with these chains on them. And we can do those in different configurations without putting a bunch of holes in my patio. And here I have a seven ish meter long distance between my anchor and the tree to give us a little bit more of a realistic uh, pull from the slack line rather than from my backyard where I only had about a one meter long slack line pulling on our anchor. The first example I always like to show when doing equalization is a straight bolt pattern here. You can see how it's a little bit less than two feet across. The uh, bolts are in the grass right there. I added a quick link here to make this a little bit easier to attach. Now we have Andy Lewis's four dynamometers and my one dynamometer. And I'm just using figure eights here uh, to do an equalization because those are the most easy to duplicate when you're watching a YouTube video. The way I thread my sliding X is to go up the dyno, down the shackle, up the dyno, down the shackle, up the dyno, down the shackle, and just continue that. And then only this strand right here is crossing over the other three, which are not touching or crossing over each other. And that makes it sit mostly flat. So the math here is three kilonewtons at the master point. And on a straight bolt pattern, you have 0.3 kilonewtons on the outside and 0.7 kilonewtons on the inside. This is a little bit more than double the force on the most centered bolts. Okay, so now I changed it, the same bolt pattern to a dynamic rope. The rope we were using is a very static canyoneering rope. It's a Dyneema core, just like soft shackles are made out of, with a Technora sheath. So this is actually like 20-ish kilonewtons, eight millimeter rope, rather than a standard eight millimeter climbing rope, which is only 14 kilonewtons. This is bomber. However, I am asked that a dynamic rope, would it equalize better? And I have moved this around. I shook it back and forth aggressively. We're at three kilonewtons right now. And uh, no, it doesn't. We have half a kilonewton on the outsides here. And in the middle, we have almost one kilonewton. It's significantly um, consistent by pulling the things most in line with it. Now here is the same 9.2 millimeter dynamic rope, but it's 11 feet long. And I don't know why you would ever do a sliding X 11 feet long because you would need whoopee slings that are gigantic. However, uh, three-ish kilonewtons here. And the theory is that because they're so close to each other and this distance here is so far, it should be pulling evenly. Well, is it? Hmm, half a kilonewton on the sides and one kilonewton here and 0.89 here. Okay, so I just shook it violently to see if I can get it to equalize any better. And yeah, it didn't do, yeah, it didn't do anything. Uh, this is still pulling more than double uh, in the middle because it's most directly in line. So the longer your anchor does not compensate for the principle of the most directly in line will hold the force. Okay, back to our 10 meter long, eight millimeter static rope. And what I did here is I extended this with uh, what I would call chain link. This is what I have. To imitate chain link, you don't want to use aluminum carabiners in your anchor like this. Um, but it's very static, and if you did a bunch of quick links or something, um, extending a straight bolt pattern out on the sides to simulate the center bolts being further back. Okay, and this, I had a theory that this would work. Um, this is only, by the way, um, a four, four and a half foot long anchor uh, with my 10 millimeter 10 meter rope. 3.7 kilonewton. It's on the master point. What does the verdict say? Ah, shit. I thought this was a good idea. Ah, half, one, more than one, and 0.6. Now I changed it to 
sliding X's with shoulder length slings. And I have here, um, these are the, the Mammut's new ones that are built like span sets where the inner core goes around and around and around and around like a span set and has this abrasion resistant sheath over it. This is 24 kilonewton strong and um, I would be pretty comfortable highlighting on this except for the fact that I have aluminum carabiners here. Aluminum doesn't handle cyclic loading as good as steel does. Steel bends, these explode. So if you had steel here or quicklinks, which quicklinks are made out of steel, um, I would highline on this if there were whoopee slings going from uh, what would be our bolts to our master point. So this is actually a really neat setup and I'll show you why. 3.26 kilonewtons and it bisects the thing so there's no more center bolts and then it evenly pulls uh, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, 0 0.82, 0 0.78. That's literally perfect. And you can see how bisecting those angles down here, how much that really, really helps. So the benefit to knowing this is if you come across a straight bolt pattern, which is super common, and you notice that they're not good bolts, this is a thing you can do to make sure you're pulling on them evenly especially if you're doing something complex like a space net or a rope swing when it really matters. And this is also good for cams, if you're rigging off at cams. Now, a single point to me is two cams. So two cams would be this point here and the two cams would be up there coming to a V. And so you would have eight cams total and you would take those points and you would go V to this V to this V. And that's called a cascading anchor and that pulls on all those cams fairly evenly. And of course you would whoopee sling directly to all the cams. And you would do either the set of cams or you would do each one individually and have eight whoopies, which would be a clusterfuck here at the master point. But it uh, depends on how good of the rock and how good your cams are and how confident you are in placing them. Uh, you get to decide all that when building your anchor. And now for my favorite configuration the oh so simple figure eight. Figure eight with no knot in the tails. The tails just go through and then you tie it in, whatever. Uh, we show fig, uh, BFKs in other videos. 3.5 kilonewtons at the master point, and I did my best. I tried so hard to uh, tie this evenly, and I kicked it around afterwards. Anyways, it's not even. These are almost double in the middle, just like before. Uh, and but you know what that's super good enough a bolt is 24 ish kilonewtons these little six millimeter guys are like 30 kilonewtons your rope your BFK we did some tests on these normal eight millimeter static ropes broke at like I don't know 14,000 pounds but um, super strong stronger than any of your here webbing you're ever gonna attach this to so uh, if you're not worried about each individual point, if you're not working with really soft rock or dealing with ice screws and glaciers or dealing with cams and weird situations, this is fine. You have like a 20 to 1 safety ratio and it's redundant as hell because any of these strands could break and it's isolated because of this knot. I highly recommend the BFK for almost every anchor that you ever do. It's just nice to know what's going on with the forces in each strand in case you have to make hard decisions. Okay, let's try this bolt pattern here. Uh, what I did was I put the slack line uh, in line so I know what center is, which is very important. And then my two outside bolts are exactly one foot apart. And from the back to the side is 12 inches apart from that bolt to that bolt. Now it's important that a half inch bolt has 10 diameters apart from each other. In English, that means half an inch times 10 is five inches apart from each other. Um, so that would be five inches apart. And you can see here that we are more than five inches. I did six inches. I put the three right in the middle of the slack line and I'm even between the two. So these are a safe distance between. These are as far away from this as they are from each other on the outside. 
So our anchor is 3.08 kilonewtons, and it's just our 10 meter long static rope in a sliding X. And we have 0.6 on the outsides and 0.7 and 0.9 on the insides. That is equalized a lot better, but that's still not perfectly equalized. And it shows that this, uh, it's so common for us to do like a curve where we go like this, like it'd be this perfect arch and like a, like a snow cone or something and all coming down to a single point. But you can see here, it's more like a parabola where it's, it goes from here all the way up and back down. And I'm gonna probably put these even further back to find out if we can get those to pull exactly the same as these. Okay, so I moved the back bolt 16 inches instead of 12 from the outside, and we have 3.76 kilonewtons, 0 0.6, 0.7, 0 0.9, 1.3. Boy, I am so confused. How far back do those back bolts need to be before they share the damn load evenly? Okay, so I moved them really far back. These are one feet apart on the outside, and the bolts on the back are two feet behind those bolts. And our master point is 3.44 kilonewtons, 0.8 on these outside ones, and 0.8 on the back ones. That is pretty exciting. You can see here that we have two feet here from this bolt if you go directly back and of course these have to be spaced out um, at least the minimum five inches apart uh, that is really far back that is quite a big parabola but you can see here that we have a really really good equalization okay the same configuration with the back bolts twice as far back as the outside bolts are close we have uh, BFK 3.2 kilonewtons, the master point. Uh, basically 0 0.4, 0 0.7, and then 0.9 evenly back here. That's not terrible. And I do like the simplicity of having uh, isolated legs, uh, even though they're not perfectly equalized. Um, it's, it's okay. BFKs are random at best. I'm sure I could tie this three t different times until I until I get an, up an even load, but that's just how BFKs go. It's just really hard to get them to equalize, and if it really matters, you need to do a sliding X or a cascading anchor with whoopee slings uh, if it really, really matters. Okay, so I completely moved areas. I was over there, and now I've built an anchor over here, sliding X. Uh, same dimensions as we were successful on the other side, 2.7 kilonewtons, to see if it's replicable, if it's consistent, if it's going to give us the same results, half a kilonewton on the outside, 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, close, damn it, but not perfect. This is one foot apart here and two feet apart from here to here. So on this pattern, I split the closest ones out an additional foot, so they're two feet apart now, and the back ones are two feet behind those. We are at three kilonewtons. 0 0.7, 0 0.67, and 0.8 and 0.7. It was actually, actually really helpful to spread out these outside bolts. Uh, this is a nice pattern. We have nice angles on our sliding X here. And for our final bolt pattern, a three bolt pattern. Has anybody even asked why we use four bolts? Because technically one has a one bolt has a five to one safety ratio for any force you put on on a normal high line. Two is redundant and three is overkill. I actually don't know why we've done four bolts. I think that was a lack of knowledge back in the day on how much force these things actually held. But if you look here, we have 2.3 kilonewtons on the master point, and these are two feet apart, two feet here and two feet here. So that is a two foot triangle, or a triangle with two foot legs. 0.78 and 0.82 are pretty much the same, and 0.71. A triangle pattern, a three bolt triangle pattern, might be the new 
bolting standards for highlining since we know that things are, especially in good rock, things are plenty strong, it's very redundant, and this sliding X is very equalized. Here's our final triangle three bolt pattern with a BFK. Does it equalize any better? 2.2 is the master point. 0 0.72, 0 0.88, 0 0.71. That's pretty good considering BFKs are equalized at best, but I'm pretty happy with the three bolt triangle pattern. So I find that my three bolt triangle bolt pattern here is actually pretty good. I really like it. And let me know if you think that can be a bolting standard that we use in our Highline community. As long as we have good rock and I assume you're putting in good bolts. Uh, let me know in the comments below the flaws you think are in my park science. And what other stuff you think I should try. But as you can see equalization is all over the place. And if you're pulling on one thing more than the other unevenly, you could rip stuff out and you might die. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.